What up, B-Squad? It is your boy JB, and we are here today, you guys, with a brand new review for The Real Housewives of Dubai. This is season two, episode number nine. This episode is titled Note to be Trusted, you guys. Now, before we jump into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys aren't subscribed yet, then I need you guys to do me a solid favor and stop taking out of this date and then having me pay for it at the end of it. You guys know the routine. You can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and also by turning on your post notifications, you guys. And with that out of the way, without further ado, let's discuss the Real Housewives of Dubai, shall we? All right, you guys, so this episode, now you guys know we were off last week, so we're back this week. And this episode picked up where we last left off two weeks ago with the voice note, right? And I said it last time, and I'll say it again this week, right? Lisa, excuse me, y'all, Lisa, y'all know how I feel about Lisa. Y'all know I love Lisa. Go up for Lisa, right? As much as I, and I, I'm going to still say this right here real quick, too. I still think that Sarah's fake. Now, she was absolved, but I do still feel that Sarah is fake. So the voice note wasn't the aha moment that Talleen or Stanberry were expecting, right? So Lisa explained like, hey, you know, um, Sarah and I were talking and, you know, I was listening to the voice note and then it was like, did I hear what I thought, you know, did I hear what I thought I heard, right? And so I sent it to Ayan. Now, what blew me was Talene was like, you went to Ion for um, like interpretation or something like that. I was like, excuse you, Talene? Girl, sit down. This episode, I was annoyed with Talene. I really, truly was annoyed with her because she got on my nerves in two scenes in particular. And we'll talk about those as well. Actually, three. Because we'll talk about those things as we get to them. So Lisa told Ion, play the voice note. So they played the voice note. And if you listen to the voice note, Sarah wasn't talking about Brooks. She was talking about Talene not being the biggest fan of Brooks. And, you know, it was really. And then she said she didn't like, you know, how Rafi approached her. And I was like, ooh, egg on Stanberry's face and egg on Talene's face. Right. So then. um Talene in her interview was like, well, you know, part of her wanted it to be that Sarah was talking, you know, crap about the other black woman, but then she knows how much she means to her. So she was kind of glad that it, it didn't go that way. I was like, Talene, you're, you're you full of it, baby girl. So Lisa apologizes to Sarah, Sarah and Stanberry tried to apologize to Ion, and Ion told her that they were done. And in this particular moment, I was looking at Ayan and I'm like, Ayan, you're doing the most. Like, you're upset. You're angry at Stanberry. You're angry at Lisa when you did this to be messy. Like, Lisa shared that with you, just saying, like, hey, girl, listen to this. Tell me if I, you know, and we do this with our friends, right? If you see something, read something, hear something from somebody else, you may take a screenshot. You may send send what send a voice note to your friend and be like, "Man, am I reading this correctly? Am I hearing this correctly? Am I seeing this correctly?" Right? And you you never you hope for it to not like get outside of your friend group, especially if you two are tight knit. You kind of expect for it not to get outside of your YouTube. But that's what Ayan did. She went and shared it with Stanberry and with Talene. And Stanberry is like, well, in all honesty, um, Chanel never said that it was your voice note, Lisa. It really doesn't matter whose voice note it is. But here's my thing. Stanberry, you have to be like, think about it. If you obviously know Sarah didn't send um, her the voice note. So who else would have sent her the voice note? It wasn't you. It wasn't Talene. And it, so by process of elimination, We've eliminated Sarah because we know Sarah didn't send it to her. We've eliminated you because you know you didn't send it to her. And we've eliminated Tylene because you guys were all at the table together. So that leaves only two people that this voice note could have come from. That's either Lisa, her best friend, or the other black woman. 
And, you know, she and other black woman ain't that cool either. So by process of elimination, you knew you had to have known that it came from Lisa. Unless you want to say, oh, it could have came from somebody outside of the friend group. Possible. But we ain't going to play semantic. I don't want to play semantics with that, right? So Lisa and Ayan, they got up. Well, actually, Ayan got up and left from the table, right? So the ladies decided that they were going to go out, you know, clubbing and bar hopping, right? So Lisa went to go check on Ayan. And then we see on the screen 20 minutes later, right? And we hear Lisa crying and we hear Ayan crying. So Lisa has called her husband and he didn't answer the phone, but she also called um, Chris, Ayan's husband, right? And so Chris answered the phone and she told Chris like, hey, you know, Ayan and I got into, well, Ayan and I got into a sheet. I went to her room and she says that Ayan just really just cussed her out, right? And so, you know, <laughs> while she was on the phone with Chris, her phone rang and it was rich. Now, mind you, Lisa, I love you, girl, but uh, she was crying. And when she got on the phone with Rich, baby, them tears, they were gone. They were gone for about a, a good second. And but then I heard her start back crying. I was like, oh, Lisa, good one. But she just let, you know, she let um, Rich know what happened between she and Ayan. And, you know, his thing is that you guys are friends. You guys will get over this rough patch in your friendship. And, you know, he said, you know, she said that the girls want to go out. But she said she was going to stay. He's like, no, don't stay in, in the room. Go out and have fun. Basically, like, get your mind off of this. But, um, yeah, you guys, that was it. That was really it. So we see Ayan. She is in her room, fake sleeping. It's still blowing me that Ayan is making herself the victim in this particular situation. I, I find that truly fascinating. <laughs> it's funny to me. Very so, yeah, Chanel, you guys, like I said, just doing the absolute most and uh it's it's like the old saying a hit dog will holler and that's why i really feel like this situation is with her so here's my here's my next thing right now after lisa had had her conversation well not even conversation after lisa got cussed out by ion she was talking to the other black woman who in her face was pretending like you know she cared but then in her interview, she was all gleeful. And I was like, girl, you are just a nasty, spirited person. Like, God, I don't, I don't see if that woman just so nasty and so, Because, like, how do you get glee out of that? that? That means you obviously don't have real friendships. My bad, you guys. Um, but, yeah, that means that you just don't have any real friendships. So the ladies went out. They went to, you know, I think they went to a club. Went to a bar and all that kind of stuff. Now, Stanberry, what you where you lost me at in this particular episode, in this particular scene, was when Lisa was dancing in a cage, and you were like, "Isn't that how she met her husband?" And I was like, "Now, Stanberry, let's not go there. Let's not do that, beloved. I, I, I'm starting to like you, Stanberry, but let's not do that because, girl, we could ask, where did you meet? Um, where did hell did you meet Sergio? Like." Never mind. Again, because I'm liking I'm liking Stan Beer, but I just didn't like that comment. Sarah, girl, why are you being a stick in the mud? My God, today, girl, you were just doing, you were being a stick in the mud, and it was honestly annoying my soul and my spirit. Because it's like, Sarah, this is a girl's trip. Y'all are there to let loose, have fun, just live your lives, right? Stop being, you know, this prude, because that's what Sarah was giving off, was prudish, right? They also, you know, like I said, they were bar hopping. They were drinking liquor. Now, it was some cheap liquor, according to them, right? So then Talene wanted to play matchmaker with this guy who looked like Fabio. And initially, I thought she was, I thought it was two guys, one for Brooks and one for Saba. But the one guy was just with, um, you know, Brooks. And he was, I guess he was the owner of one of the clubs. I don't know. Could be wrong. But I know he followed them around for a little bit. So after that, they went to this one bar where it was either a bar or a club where Stanberry got on the stage and, you know, she, you know, she was having fun. 
and that was really it. It looks fun. It was lighthearted. No, nothing, nothing too extensive there. They just had a great time. And then, and then once Stanberry was on the stage, everybody else just went up there and joined her on the stage. And that was that, right? Now, the next day, we see Stanberry and um, Talene, right? Oh, God, Ayan, because you literally gave Stanberry and um, Talene something to talk about. Now, what I will say is I'm, I'm, I am starting to side-eye Talene a whole lot, right? Because it do now it it is it is weird. Because initially, it's fine to be cool, be cool with who you want to be cool with, be friends with who you want to be friends with, right? But it now I'm starting to see I'm like it do look like you kind of stepped over your friend to have a friendship with um, Stanberry. It, it does look that way, right? And I and like I said before, I think that Stan not Stanberry, but Talene and another black woman, they are the same person. <laughs> I really feel like they are the same person, right? So they're talking about Ayan and the fact that what happened last night at dinner backfired on, well, certain, well, technically it's, it backfired on you, Stanberry, because it wasn't really the true aha moment that you thought it was. And you've, and then, um, T not Talene, why do I get, so let me get my words together. Stanberry feels that Ion should, you know, take accountability and own what happened. And that I agree with. If Ion in the moment was like, you know what, Lisa, I shouldn't have shared the voice note with her. And I apologize to you for that. It wasn't, you know, I was just trying to be a little, you know, messy, get this, get some stuff stirred up. I wasn't trying to necessarily come against you and leave it at that, right? But no, instead, Ion got so upset and defensive so then we see ayan and she's talking to chris now where ayan lost me at in this particular scene where she in her interview she kept referring to lisa as a bitch and i was like damn girl that was that's if that's your best friend here's my thing me and my best friend we have been friends for almost 20 years we have had ish we haven't had it we fought like we felt like brother and sister right there are times where she gets mad at me there's been times where I've been mad at her and never. And, and I know I can speak for me I, and I, I can speak. I know I can say the same for her. Even when we are mad at each other, we never go below the belt with each other. We don't call each other out. I, I ain't never called her out her name and she ain't never called me out of my name. I know that about both of us because we value our friendship kind of the same way that, you know, Chanel says Lisa's her sister. My best friend is my sister. And like I said, I ain't never, ever got to the point where I'm like, you know, that bitch this and that bitch that. Like, I, that's my best friend. <laughs> that is my best friend, and I, I refuse to call her that because and in this particular instance, the fact that Lisa and her can see it, it's like, oh, uh, this is like, I don't know how I feel about this. And then I saw her on Watch What Happens Live the other night talking about Lisa, and it's like, Lisa in her interviews has you know even on watch what happens live lisa hasn't said anything negative about chanel but here goes chanel on watch what happens live talking about lisa and i was like oh girl and also you guys if you guys didn't know andy has posted on x aka twitter asking for questions for the reunion they're getting ready to film it pretty soon so if you guys have any questions go over to andy's um social inst on on to his x slash twitter leave your questions for him there right now with lisa well, not with lisa with ion i had an issue with ion not taking accountability for her part in this like you were being messy and i just wanted ion to just own it like be be real about it. be real about it. Be like, yeah, you know what? I was being a little messy. I was, you know, it's it's the other black woman we're talking about. So I ain't really cool with her like that. So any little moment that I can get to just kind of take a little bit of a jab and a dig at her, I'm gonna take it. And that's essentially what Ion did, right? But again, she is making it about herself. Now. The day's festivities is, so you guys remember, that this trip is Eat, 
prey party, right? So they've done a lot of eating. They partied last night. So today is the prey part. And you guys know who is in charge of that one. You guessed it, Sarah. So with Sarah, here's my thing with Sarah. I, and I said it, I've said it plenty of times before that I do like Sarah. My only thing with Sarah is the fact that Sarah comes off extremely fake to me. And she comes off fake, right? Then with Sarah, she's 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 so so deep, right? Because the thing with this is they're going to a place where you can it's like a cleanse, right? Or it, it, it's like a cleanse or a spiritual thing where you can heal your traumas and and things of that nature with the waters, right? And I'm, I, here's my let me let me say this real quick before I don't want to to come off any kind of way that I'm judging because I'm not judging. I think that those things are wonderful for people who are, are into those kind of things and who believes in those things, right? But with Sarah, everything with her just feels like an act. And I don't know what's really truly Sarah and what's not Sarah. Because some things just feel like an act with her. And the spiritual healing stuff to me, it just kind of feels like an act but that's neither here nor there, right? So we see as Saba and I and um and Sarah are at the table talking. So then Ayan came down and they had a conversation with Ayan about what happened the night before. And once again, Ayan, it's like she's making herself the victim in this whole entire thing, right? So Lisa came down. And, you know, Ayan told Lisa that, you know, she wants to apologize to her and she loves her. And so Lisa broke down crying. And I get why Lisa started crying. It's because you and I are the we're best friends. Like and then Ayan even said it. Lisa is one of her I think is her main friend in Dubai. So here's my thing. Like I said, you can get mad at your friends. And whatnot. But if you value your friendships and your relationships, you won't go below the belt. You know what I'm saying? But Lisa even said the same thing that she said on Watch What Happens Live when Andy had asked her, would she be willing to forgive, you know, be moved forward with Ayan? She's like, girl, it's not like you slept with my husband because we can we can move past this. Right. But Ayan, listen to Ayan apologize. I was still sitting here thinking to myself, it's like, yeah, I hear you say you're sorry, but it's no, you're still not taking any accountability for what you did. And let me say, let me say this again real quick. When it comes down to Lisa, I, I said it last time and I'll say it again this time. I think I said it earlier in the review too. Lisa was wrong. Lisa should have never shared that voice note that was between she and Sarah. Because here's my thing, Lisa, and I love you now, girl. But if you had a question about what Sarah said, why not say to Sarah, like, hey, girl, I would just listen to the last voice note. And are you saying that you're not a fan of Brooks or are you talking about Talene? And then she could have cleared it up in that particular moment. But I think Lisa was just looking for a moment to be a little messy. And I'm not upset. I'm not upset about it. It just, you know, it just makes you have a little side eye for both she and Ayan, right? Still love them, but makes you have a little bit of a side eye for them. So they get to where they're going to be going, right? Now, what I would say is I'm not someone who would be willing to pull my shoes off and walk on the ground, not knowing what's on there. That I wouldn't have been able to. I wouldn't have been able to do. I'm like, can I? But if it if it's sacred grounds, then I guess I, for the purpose of it being sacred grounds, I would have taken my shoes off. But I would have felt so, like. I'm I'm a germaphobe, and that would have bothered me. But neither here nor there, right? Now, Talene, because at one point they they had these little um, statues or shrines or whatever, and the guy said like pray to him, and Lisa was like, you know, no disrespect or anything, but that doesn't align with my religion or things like that. And so she said, can I not participate? So then you got Talene over here in her interview talking about, well, where was that moral, where was that moral high ground last night when you were dancing in the cage? Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. 
this is the second time that Celine pissed me off in, in this episode. And it's like judging much because here's the thing. I know people who go to church every freaking Sunday and go out on Saturday nights. I've been one of those people too, where go out on a Saturday night and be in church on Sunday morning, right? So you be in church praising the Lord on Sunday morning, but that night before in the club, tossing them back, tossing them back, you know, singing all the rap songs and whatever songs on the DJs playing, but you still can like, that was, that was uncalled for to lean uncalled for but they had a good time um they got they went to the waterfall so at the waterfalls you just scream and it releases everything and it worked for everybody except for stanberry and talene because lisa was talking about you know i didn't um shout you know um shout out to lisa and my condolences to lisa as well right because her brother had passed away now she didn't say i think she said he had previously passed away but my condolences to Lisa for that. And because death, my God, you know, it has to, you know, it's going to happen to each one of us. But, you know, you always just you, you can't really anticipate it, even though it's something that, you know, is going to happen. But, yeah, my condolences to Lisa. Also, I forgot to mention that on their way to this place, they were split up in the car. So it was the black women in one car. Then you had Sarah, Stanberry, Talene, and Saba in another car. Now, Stanberry, I get a girlfriend. You went out the night before, got drunk, drank some cheap liquor, but you should have got something. <laughs> you should have just stayed at home because you were miserable the entire time. She, now, she threw up at one point, but Stanberry was just miserable. And I was just like, can somebody, I mean, I get it that this is part of the show that they have to be there but god dang she's miserable and she's sick send her back to her room do something with stanberry so after that we um we get back to the, where they're staying right and so lisa has arranged for them to go to dinner and she's also arranged for them to wear traditional bali dresses right I thought the dresses looked nice, right? She, and she had picked out dresses for each of the women. So I love the fact that, especially Lisa was a, a sport because she, this was something that she wanted to, she set up to do. Saba went along with it. Shockingly, Sarah went along with it and Ayan went along, went along with it. But then you got to lean in her interview. Like, I didn't know that she was in charge of wardrobe as well. Man, just go with it and just have fun. It's, it's just called having fun. It's called having fun. So Talene didn't want feeling it. The other black woman wasn't feeling it. And Stanberry wasn't feeling it. And I don't know if it was Talene or if it was the other black woman who said that they didn't want to disrespect the culture. It was Talene. I was like, but you're talking about how these dresses look. That's very disrespectful to the culture. And then for Stanberry to say that they probably got this off of a poor girl at a restaurant that they had to return in bed. So I'm like, then that's disrespectful too. And then I don't wear mustard yellow, but you wear a helmet for a wig. <laughs> she don't wear the other black woman. She doesn't wear um, mustard yellow, but girl, your wigs like a damn helmet. Like girl, miss me with all the bullshit. That's the episode, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about it down in the comments below. You guys, subscribe to the channel. Turn your post notifications on and share the video. Until the next time, stay safe out there, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, you guys.